suddenly tired. <clears throat> All right. So let's just sort this out a little bit here. So this is the deck that I'm going to be playing. I've been brewing up uh, variations on Doomsday Storm with Echo of Eons um, for about a week now or so. And this version has felt pretty powerful to me. Um, been testing very well in the uh, glorious Moto practice rooms where only the finest decks and opponents reside. I'm something like 21 and 6 or 21 and 7 maybe um, in practice room matches over the past few days. So, you know, a 70-75% win rate seems good, but then you have to play it against real decks and people who don't suck. So, that's what we're going to do today. Um, so we've got, whoops, got 15 lands, um, 9 rituals, 8 mana rocks. For that's for our mana, so a lot of mana in the deck. And then there's also a lot of business in the deck. We got the four Burning Wish, three Doomsday, the fourth in the board. Um, two of these draw fours with another one in the board. And then Tendrils in the main deck. And a play set of Echo Vions. Eight cantrips. Can't don't really have room for more, even though I'd rather I'd like to be able to play like ten or so, but you have to start cutting into other stuff. And then we got the Veil of Summers um, and Thought Seizes for protection. Veil vale is obviously pretty strong since basically every deck is playing it now. Um, but it's also very good against blue decks when you're trying to echo. Um, and then the sideboard is like mostly a wish board. So we got a few, a couple extra empties to actually bring in. Um, but then, you know, empty to wish for. Consigned to Oblivion, I'm not super sold on. It's kind of just a flexible, wishable answer. Against, like, Chalice decks and stuff, I imprison type decks, I actually usually side it in. Um, along with Echoing Truth. So, like, the Chain of Vapors and the... Whoops. Chain of Vapor and Flusterstorm and Echoing Truth are kind of like your actual sideboard, per se. That's all that you really have for real sideboard cards. I suppose the two empties as well. Um, and then the pretty much the rest is wishboard. So you got some powerful card draw options in your sideboard. You have Grape Shot as a way to, you know, mow down an opponent's board. Also can win the game if your storm count gets very high, which isn't that difficult to do. And um, can be very good against opposing Veil of Summers. Just a flexible answer. And then some wishable win cons and tendrils and empty. Another um, business spell, potential business spell, so you can wish up doomsday if you need it. And then you have a discard spell that you can also sideboard. I sideboard that in sometimes. Um, but it gives you another a way to turn excess burning wishes into protection in game one. Um, and something interesting to note about the side sideboard therapy and also thought seizes is that they can put echo in your own graveyard. Um, and that can be important sometimes. So, oh, so this is the list I intend to play. Um, I don't think there's any last minute changes that I want to make to it. Probably just going to jump right into a, a league. Um, I don't, excuse me, <laughs> I don't have a lot of, um, play points or anything. I've got... Yeah, I have 11 event tickets, so that's just enough for a league. Um, not much else. So, I don't want standard, I want legacy. You've got one viewer. Hello, one viewer. Um, probably just jump right into the league. I, I've been playing this deck a lot lately, so I don't really need any warm-up time. So, we'll just jump right in. And if I really fucking bomb out of this, then, um, 
you know, maybe I'll play a few practice matches or something to wrap up the stream, but I'll try and try and play well here. <laughs> See what the deck can do. Alright. I won the roll. Um, this hand's pretty reasonable. It's a little awkward because it only has the one land, and I basically am forced to fetch non-basic, but I'm not going to throw it away. So we've got a lot of good cards here. The real question is, do I want to ponder first or thoughts use first? I think I'm going to go with the ponder first. So grab an underground scene will pawn there, because I'm kind of... I'm looking for another land, basically. I, I think I really want to find another land. And those are all good cards, so I'm going to take the other land. And there's a Cabal Ritual in there, too. So hopefully I don't just get spanked right away. Interesting. So this looks like humans, or slivers. Ooh. Oh, I should have recognized the name. My opponent's... um. This person just plays slivers in every format. <laughs> like Popper, Modern, Legacy, it's all all slivers all day, baby. So I should have recognized that. So they probably are playing Wastelands. They probably also have some number of Force of Will, I think. I think there's enough blue slivers in the deck. Um, I guess I'm going to brainstorm now. I'm only going to see two cards, but I think that'll be okay. Ooh, that's not, not great. Hmm, I think... Right, I'm going to do that, um, and I'm just going to pass here, and I'll probably try and fetch on their end step. If they cast like a blue sliver or something, I could shoot off the Veil of Summer just to draw a card. I don't think it's going to be super good in this matchup. Like, I think Thought Seizes will be just as effective here. What we got? Hibernation Sliver. So that is the blue sliver so I could I could cycle this veil of summer so here's the kind of the consideration here is that if I want to use infernal contract as my business spell um, I it's gonna cost me a lot of life and the slivers are going to do a lot of damage to me. So by the time I'm ready to try to go off with it, I'm probably not going to have... You know, I'm not going to be able to live. Uh, they'll be lethal on board. So... I'm just going to cycle the Veil of Summer. Naturally, I drew another one. Echo of Eons. That's very interesting. I, so I think I'm going to just thought he's here, and then we'll try and think about maybe going for it next turn. Mutavault, Krakus, Ancient Ziggurat, Cloud Shredder, First Strike. I think I need to get rid of the Cloud Shredder, Sliver. But they don't really have a lot going on, so I'm going to be in a pretty good position, I think. What I'll end up doing here is next turn I'll Brainstorm, and then try and just go off with Echo. The real question is going to be, do I need to, like, you know, um... Veil first. Ooh, and they drew a predatory sliver. I'm glad I took the Cloud Thresher. Because giving everything haste and a buff like that would be pretty rough. So, so yeah, they have lethal on board now. Or, yeah, they do. So let's brainstorm. And then I'll just try and kill this turn. I didn't draw... I don't have a red mana source for the Burning Wish. I think I'm just gonna, just gonna have to Echo here. But I didn't draw another land either, which means I'm not gonna be able to cast Veil first. I will have Threshold, though. Alright, probably what I want to be doing here... I'll have a land drop, too. I'm just gonna put back these...
So what I'm going to just do is I'm just going to cabal it LED echo and hope for the best with the assumption that I will be losing the game next turn. So let's echo. That looks pretty lethal. Um, I, if I could get this Veil of Summer off to protect myself, that would be nice. So I'm going to start by... I can cast a couple of these cantrips. So I'm going to start with a Ponder. See if I can find a green mana source for the Veil. I guess I'll just shuffle that. None of that's really what I want. Although, well, hmm. I guess they, the contract could maybe bait out a counter spell if they have one. I'll still have plenty of mana to kill with. No, I'm just going to shuffle. Another Burning Wish. Alright, let's brainstorm here. Come on, give me a land or something. Okay, so that is a red mana source. Actually, this is perfect. Put back the Burning Wish and the Brainstorm. Can play the land for turn, so let's think. If I thought sees now, five, so I'll thought sees just to make sure that I get through here. Looks like they don't have anything. Unsettled Mariner is good to know about. I'll just take the Unsettled Mariner and then I'll play the Lotus Petal. Play the LED. And then I'm gonna. I'll veil because I can. And then Burning Wish. And Crack for Black. And Tendrils. So there we go. Got a nice little echo kill to start. <laughs> Alright. So. Assuming that there is permanent base interaction here, I'm going to want the chains, and I'll probably want the echoing truth, and I'll want the consign. I think I'll cut the veils. I'm guessing there's not going to be counter magic, but I'm not sure exactly, but I'm willing to take that chance, I think. So I'll cut the veils, and then I'll have to cut one more card. I'm not sure exactly what I want that to be. Could cut Rain of Filth. Um, but I don't think I want to do that. I could cut a Ponder. Since I don't have a ton of time to just be faffing around trying to combo off. Could cut a Doomsday. I, I do that sometimes in combo matchups, but I don't think that I want to do it in this matchup. I'll probably cut the Reign of Filth. I think I'd rather have the Ponder to be able to dig for a bounce spell um, in case I need to <coughs> something. <laughs> we'll see if I've misevaluated. Um, who Jesus. Okay, so this is just like a big old yeet, I think. Um, I think the play here is going to be to just jam in on turn one. I wonder if they play Deafening Silence. I do have the Bounce spell, if that's the case, um, so I could ponder for another land. But I think I, I'm i inclined to say I'm just going to go for it. <laughs> okay. 
Alright, so I'm going to keep the multi six. I'd love to be able to find another land to cast the Cabal, right? Ley Line of the Void. Okay, that makes my hand a lot worse. So I'm going to be looking for another land so I can bounce that before I do anything else. Fortunately, I do have this bounce spell. <sighs> Gale Rider Sliver, okay. That's fine. Fine to start with. Having some kind of hate bear would be a little annoying. Right off the bat. Oh, I got a dark red. Okay, so if I can find another land to go to be able to bounce something, this hand is looking very, very strong. Because especially with a dark red, I can even bounce, if I find another land, I can bounce an echo on the same turn. There's a land, dark red, thought seize. So I have enough mana, I think I'm going to take the thought seize. So leave that dark red down there take the thoughts using the swamp. And next turn I'll just go for it. I could even wait another turn depending on what they play. You know, like I could thought seize and then echo and have the dark grid as well so I have a ton of mana. What's up, Reverse Mermaid? You're seeing some shit. Ugh, you are here to see the shit. <laughs> what I really don't want is to get Wastelanded. I didn't see any Wastelands last time. I'm assuming that they're in the deck. I would be quite surprised if that was not the case. What we got, Sinew Sliver, okay. So... I'm inclined at this point to Thoughtseize on my next turn and then go off the turn after that. Let me think. So if I go Dark Rit into Cabal Rit, I'll have, that'll be four black. Thought Seize will put me to three black. Consign will put me to two black. And then I'll have those two LEDs. Maybe it makes sense to just jam it. It's a lot of mana. But if I wait a turn, I could have even more mana. I'm just going to wait. Like, even if they have the Wasteland, they won't be able to replay the Ley Line, so I can just... Um, I could bounce it end step. I guess the problem with that idea is if they have a Force of Will or something. Um, unexpected. So, yeah, this is looking fine to me. I'm just going to take this hit, and then I'm just going to do it all this turn. So we'll start with the Dark Rim. I'm going to have a lot of mana here. We'll go with Thought Seize. Oh, they do have a Force. So I'll take the Force Negation. What does Crystal and Sliver do? Yeah, I'll take the Force Negation. That's good to know that, that they have Forces and stuff. I'm going to bounce the Ley Line now. I'm glad I didn't do this at the end step. Um because I have now I have a mana up um so I can dark rit and then cabal rit and those will be my graveyard as well instead of an exile so that I'll have the opportunity to draw them um off of all of this crap so I'm going to try to leave my black mana untouched this deck is very black hungry um, and I probably only need one red to be able to Burning Wish, so I'm going to use two of the red to pay. I have a land drop this turn, too. Alright, so there's the Burning Wish. The only thing I didn't get is mana. I mean, uh, discard spell. I'll Brainstorm. Okay, I have another Burning Wish. I have a Valk for my land drop, so this should be plenty. To kill them with. So I'll put back that. I'll put back this extra land. Because if now if the first Burning Wish gets countered, um, I still have a second one. 
and I should have enough mana to do all of this too. So we'll go Burning Wish. So as long as they don't have double force, I think this will be fine. So they force, that's fine. I'm actually going to brainstorm here because if I can draw a discard spell, which I didn't, um, <laughs> I'll go like this. So hopefully they don't just have multiple forces. So unless there's a Mind Break Trap now, yeah, we're good. Okay. Dab on him. So yeah, Echo's a good card. Echo's pretty strong. Um, hitting that extra red source was good, though. I'll have to be more careful in that matchup. Um, because, you know, I don't... Uh, I, I didn't... Yeah, the deck is whack. <laughs> I didn't know whether or not they're playing Force of Wills, um, and I cut a lot of my protection against that. Um, so, but I guess it's kind of a toss-up, because, like, like, I know they have Unsettled Mariner. Probably playing other stuff as well. Um, so it's... I don't know. You kind of have to take your chances, I guess, but... Well, that hand blows, so we're going to maul. This hand is playable, so I'll keep. Um, I guess I'm going to get rid of the Badlands. Not the greatest hand here. Um, I'll definitely a little on the vulnerable side to a Wasteland. Those are all good cards. So. I think I'll do this. exactly what I was talking about. But fortunately, I have plenty of mana still. Um, I think I want to draw that Duress. So I'm just going to play out the Tarn. And pass. Because I don't even know what they're playing at this point. It could be Delver. It could be Four Color Loam. There we go. More Wastelands and shit. So this is fine. I'll be able to get both my basics. And this is actually a big part of why I, I liked having multiple basics, two basics in the deck, so I can have all my colors to operate off of. So I'll grab the Snow-Covered Island. The fact that they had the second Wasteland and played it out makes me think this is probably a non-blue deck, which generally means it's good for me. There's an Echo and a, an LED, so that's good. I'm going to put back the Ponder, and I guess probably one of the Thought Seizes. I don't think I'll need a second thought sees against whatever my opponent is playing. And if they if they have something big bad next turn, like like if they're death and taxes and they have two thalias in hand or something, um, the second thought sees isn't gonna matter because they're just gonna play it. So a thought sees here, we'll see what they're up all about. Ooh -ee. Now that is not what I expected to see. So I think the take here is the dark writ. Um, unless they draw an Urborg, they're not going to be able to do anything next turn, but drawing a any black source would let them dark it into something, but I don't know. Even a sinkhole at this point is not like the end of the world because I have the Lotus Petal. I still think the dark is the take. I don't think anything else is super threatening. So I'm going to take the Dark Rit, and I'm probably going to play out these LED, the LED and the Lotus Petal now, um, just in case they have some discard. Not that I... I mean, I guess they can't really discard me next turn, but... Because they don't have any black mana. I'm not sure exactly what this is. I guess it kind of looks like Pox. Um, I just didn't think Hexmage was a big player in the Pox deck. Um, so... I'm just a little unsure of that. We drew another land. That's good. So now I can get Threshold without cracking the Lotus Petal, which is pretty good because I'm not sure I want to crack the Lotus Petal. 
just yet. Grab Underground C, Cabal Rit. Crack this for blue, and then flashback the Echo. I'll take one from there, one from there. This is probably going to draw them black mana, so I'll have to be a little careful, but they're wastelanding me. So do I float blue or do I float black? I think I'm going to float blue. This is fine. It's not really a big deal. Okay, so I drew a draw four and I drew a ponder. I guess I'm just going to fucking go for it here. Um, I'm not going to spend any rituals yet. I'll have one floating after the draw four, so I can keep casting dark grits if I need to. Um, but I'm going to draw four before I use the ponder, so I can figure out, like, if I need to ponder, what am I pondering for? You know what I mean? What am I looking for with the ponder? Okay. I'm going to ponder. I'm looking for a burning wish at this point. There's a burning wish. Ooh, I drew a doomsday too. I could just doomsday them. Four, five, six, seven, eight. I guess either one would be lethal. Um, I wonder if it makes sense to not doomsday. What up, Eldorte? It might make sense not to doomsday just to hide that aspect of the deck. Because um, now we've seen Echo, they might side in a bunch of graveyard hate that is not necessarily effective. So it probably makes sense to just Burning Wish here. Also, Doomsday is potentially vulnerable to main deck um, Surgical, while the Burning Wish is not. So... If I have Surgical, they're going to see the contents of my deck anyway, so... The Echo List has been performing pretty well for me. Um, I like it a lot. Probably should have left the blue up just so that I could potentially brainstorm into something. All right. So that was good. So let's see. Against this deck, I'm guessing there's going to be Leyline of the Voids. The fact that I saw Hex Mage makes me think there's going to be, um, what the fuck are they called? Merit Lages as well. So I'm thinking I want the Chain of Vapors. And then. I'm going to take, bring in an Infernal Contract and cut a Ponder. And the reason for this is this is basically just another card advantage spell. I'm assuming they have a lot of their discard heavy. They're probably playing hymns, but probably have an anemic clock. So this is just raw card advantage, basically. Um, and then the cutting the Ponder is so that you still have a draw spell you can wish for if you need to use Burning Wish as a way to draw into a Doomsday Pile. Um, obviously, Veil of Summer is still pretty good. I know they had a lot of sinkholes and wasteland, so I'm probably going to cut the Reign of Filth. And then I need to cut one more card. Hmm. This is a matchup where I would honestly consider cutting Doomsday. I'm not sure... Well, so, like, I can still wish for Empty, so I don't necessarily need Empties in the main deck. But I'm not sure they're playing any colors besides black. I didn't see any colors at all, really. Um, <laughs> I just saw Wastelands and black cards in their hands. So, like, I'm not convinced they even have their own Veil of Summers. I'm more concerned that Graveyard Hate is going to be the thing to watch out for. Um, so... I suspect they'll be prepared for Empties post-board. They know I have Burning Wish, which means that Empty is a reasonable consideration. I need to get rid of one card. I'm kind of leaning towards the Doomsday, but if they do have a bunch of Graveyard Hate, Doomsday is one of our better ways to beat it. This is a tough choice. 
I don't want to sideboard too heavily here. Maybe I cut a Thought Seize. Is that crazy? I have Veil to protect my cards. Protect them. Protect myself from discard, I mean. Veil can protect me from Sinkhole, too, which is interesting. I'm going to try it. I'm going to cut a Thought Seize. I'm not sure that's correct, but I think I want all of my other cards, so... Uh, that's an interesting hand. <laughs> that's as good a reason as any to cut the Thoughtsies, I guess. I think I'm just going to keep this. Being able to just fucking windmill a draw four on turn one and then discard an echo to hand size is potentially pretty strong. <laughs> They're probably going to lead off on discard to... Ooh, uh-oh. Oh, Liliana the Veil. Oh, oh, oh boy. Oh, boy. Yes, I'd love to. <laughs> that doesn't seem so hot. Oh my. Oh my. Oh lord. <laughs> what to do? I feel like, like, I almost could, I got a lot of options here. This is, so I could just go Darkrit, Darkrit, LED, Echo. Assuming they don't have any kind of graveyard hate. I could go Darkrit, Darkrit, Contract, Mono Black, oh, I see, you're right, you're probably right. I didn't even notice what they discarded. Darkrit and Helm. Interesting. So, I could cast a contract before I echo. Or I could just echo. I kind of want to cast a contract first. It's probably best to just echo. Let's just echo. Not my best. I guess I'm just going to thought seize and then probably have to pass. Wow. Their hand is not good. Um, I'm going to take the Plague Engineer, though, because... That is a potential out to a um Oh wait a second. I can echo again. So I shouldn't have spent that mana. I'm probably supposed to just echo again. Like I might not win from this echo. Ugh. Man, that was bad. Well this hard casting the echo is fine because it means that I still have an echo in my graveyard now. Um Oh, I should have played that LED. I'm a fucking idiot. Yeah, because now I'm going to lose this LED, which would have been really helpful for the subsequent Echo. So that was kind of a punt. I could have thought seized to Echo again. You're right. Thought seizing myself. So this is fine. I'm just going to discard. I guess I'll just discard the drop. It doesn't really matter. My hand is so many lands at this point. Um, but yeah, not playing that LED was kind of a punt. I was just clicking through too fast. This isn't so bad, though. I still, you know, I have plenty of lands, plenty of mana and stuff. Um, I could Cruel Bargain right now. They don't really have much in the way of a clock. They have the Mistress Factory, but like... I'll still have several turns um, after that to to do this. Veil of Summer, interesting. I don't have my trop because it's in my graveyard. I do have the Chain of Vapor. Yeah, this one this one ain't coming together so well. Although I still do have the Echo in the graveyard, so if they don't get rid of my graveyard, it's not I'm not in such a bad spot. 
there's another factory. Being low on life will make this a little uncomfortable for me. What do we got? This is probably the other Liliana. Collective Brutality, yeah. I mean, that doesn't really matter to me because I don't think any of these cards in my hand are going to be what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't want to go anywhere near Mitch A. Unless I build the Four Veil of Summer, Four Sanded Swarm, Four Hope of Gear Up, or Storm deck. I really let them have it. So they drained me. So yeah, I'm not going to have a lot of time left here. Discard a card, it's fine, whatever. So they discard him to Turok. That's okay. Another Veil of Summer. This is real awkward. I think what I want to do is chain the Liliana in their upkeep. Hope that they replay it and thus don't attack me with the factories, and that'll give me one more turn to be able to have a land drop for the Echo. Because I don't want them to... I'm probably If I Echo now... I'm, with no mana floating, I'm probably not going to win, and I don't want them to be able to untap and separate all my permanents into piles. Um, although, the piles wouldn't be that profitable for them. I'd still have two lands up. But I don't really want to give them a fresh seven right now. I think I'm just going to go with this plan. I... Just upkeep chain the Liliana. But yeah, none of those wheels worked out very well, and admittedly, I, I kind of fucking blew it. But yeah, it looks like they're just coming in with the factories. Okay, well, this is going to be rough. Because if I crack a fetch, now I'm only going to have one... Oh, wait. I don't have to crack a fetch because of the Urborg. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Very interesting. And a Dark Red. Now we're talking. Let's see. So I'll probably hit a land off the Echo. So I'm not going to play a land just yet. We'll just make three black and Echo here. And I hope I get a real good one. Which I kind of didn't. Ugh. Hmm. I might be able to work with this, though. So I have a black mana up, a black mana... F or I have Badlands, which makes black. The dark... Or the, the black mana floating in the Lotus Petal makes black. I have a land drop, so Brainstorm can make... I can play the Valk to get Brainstorm. I can cast Doomsday. I can Brainstorm into, like, LED, LED, Echo, and try to construct an Echo Pile that can go off. So how many cards will be left after I do that? It'll be five cards from the pile. Doomsday in the graveyard is six, minus Echo, so still five. Six, seven... Oh, wait, Lotus Petal won't be there. Five, six... Seven, eight, nine, nine cards. So if I go LED, LED, Echo, Echo, Burning Wish, and do a double Echo pile. Let me just count this one more time. It's possible that the that won't work. Like if they draw, you know, Surgical or something like that, I could get blown out. But I can't. In, in my current position, I can't really play around that. So. So one, two, three, four, five. Plus five in the pile is ten. Minus it was nine. So I'm gonna have to get a little lucky to make this work. Let 
ID echo. Uh oh, there's only one echo left in my deck. That makes things different. I guess I don't need all of that storm. So what I'm going to need instead is going to be, let's see, LED, LED, echo, ponder, petal. Oh no, I still need the burning wish. Echo. I do have the brainstorm pedal, so let's do pedal burning wish. Hope for the best. Yeah, I think I just have to hope for the best. All right. <laughs> I don't think there is a deterministic pile from here. Down to one. I hope this works. So we go LED, LED, crack them for red and blue. Echo. And I drew the Burning Wish. Actually, really, I drew the best possible cards here. It all worked out. I'm just going to Veil. I don't think it's going to matter much, but I can afford to. Boom. Yeah, boy. All right. Bonkers. <laughs> Echo piles are sick. Especially because of what you just saw. Like, if you have a bunch of extra cards in hand, you can win the game with just a single blue mana floating and a brainstorm after... After, um... Doomsday. Like, you don't need specific cards in your hand necessarily either. You can just draw two LEDs and Echo and put two lands back in your deck and just yeet. Which is pretty sick, in my opinion. Obviously, your piles are somewhat non deterministic. Like, if I hadn't drawn the Burning Wish and those seven cards, since there were nine cards left in my deck, I had a, what, a seven out of nine chance of drawing the Burning Wish, basically. Uh, I need to draw a Burning Wish and an LED, I think, to be able to win the game from that spot. But, um, obviously I had a non-zero chance of winning, which <laughs> is, um, an interesting <laughs> situation to be in, to put yourself into that situation, but, uh, but yeah, it's sick. Atomic Tacos says, good shit. I agree. I agree with you, Atomic Tacos. Thanks for watching. So I'm just going to do this real quick. I'm not very good at math. I don't know if it's going to be any different than just literally just a 9 out of 7. But let's assume that all I had to do was draw the Burning Wish, which isn't quite true. Oh, I found a, um, a match. Yeah, it's like a 77% chance, 70, 70 plus percent chance of that pile working, which is, you know, good, good probability there, but, huh. This is an inter excuse me. This is an interesting hand. It's got a lot of good cards in it, but it kind of just doesn't do a whole lot. Hmm. I think I want to keep it. There's a lot of draws that make it very powerful, like an LED would be a solid draw. Any cantrip to help me find something is a solid draw. But I'm not super I'm not super convinced, we'll say.
and I don't know what Charlie the Banana King plays. Looking kind of like just a Delver deck, maybe. I suppose it could be like Show and Tell. That's a pretty good draw. Let's think here. So I could Burning Wish right now. Maybe grab the Therapy. Um, I don't... I don't know. I don't think there's necessarily a lot to be gained from doing anything, though. So I'm just going to pass. I think there... I don't know. This is why I was a little reluctant to keep this hand, is that it kind of is... It's not... Like, even though it's got a lot of good cards and, like, the ritual and stuff that I want, like, it's just not very fast. And so I don't really know what to be doing. Like, what it wants to be doing. It's still missing something. I mean, I could try to go for goblins here, but it doesn't really seem great. I think I'm just going to pass again. I'm obviously playing against something with Force of Wills, and I think the way I kind of get screwed here is if my opponent is playing Show and Tell, and I don't make a move. Um, because you can't let Show and Tell just sit there. Um, but right now, like, I have no real indication. It's probably not Delver because they haven't played a threat yet, but it could easily be, like, Miracles or something like that, or some kind of control deck, like Jeskai Stoneblade, I don't know, something like that. Not that that's a super common deck to be playing against, but, like, my concern is that it's Show and Tell and I'm going to get got without having done anything. Um, on the other hand, if I am going to get got, okay, I don't think it's show and tell. Huh. Phoenix? Could it be a Phoenix deck? I just have no fucking clue what this might be. Like, seriously. Absolutely no idea. I think if I draw, like, drew an LED or something, I might just... Okay, so maybe it's just a five-color pile. I didn't know they played Scrubland. Thought sees me. Fine. I don't think I'm super concerned about that. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. It's very weird. I, it's got to be five-color pile with... Astrolabe, Valk, and Scrubland. I don't know what they take here. I'm inclined to expect them to take the Burning Wish, I think. This might be a turn to Burning Wish for Cabal Therapy if they don't take the Burning Wish. Obviously, they're not going to take the Echo. They could take the Cabal Rit. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right about that. <laughs> Just seeing a doomsday in hand is pretty confusing. They're really tanking on this Thoughtseize, though. Hmm. I'm super tired. I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish this league. I'm suddenly getting hit with that wave of, like, post-lunch weekend nap time impulse. Okay, so they took the wish. I think I agree with that. Another thought sees? Yeah. Okay. So I could echo next turn. Um... Unless they take the Cabal Rit. I'm just trying to figure out like what my play is here. I just don't know. Why did they take the Echo? I'm sorry, excuse me?
Oh, they're surgically my echoes. Okay. Sure, dog. Surgical the echoes. I definitely don't need those to win the game. Hold on a second. Main deck surgical? Excuse me? What in the actual factual fuck? I really have no idea what's going on here. Do I just cast this Doomsday? I don't think so. I don't think there's a good reason to do that right now. What the fuck am I playing against? Like, legit, I have no idea. Main deck surgical. They're doing so much damage to themselves. If I just draw the t my tendrils, they just fucking die. Like, it really would not be hard to be able to just find my tendrils of agony and kill them with the way they're they're going. <laughs> and I'm under absolutely zero pressure. And so I just like I don't really feel compelled to do anything. You know? I don't need to make a move right now. I also still have an echo in my sideboard, which I can grab if if that comes up. I definitely think surgicaling the burning wish is a much, would have been a much better play for them. What you got now? Is this Vendillion click or something? Snapcaster Mage? You're gonna snap surgical? Okay, so now they're gonna snap surgical and get the burning wish. Which is like I don't know, I still am Now they have a threat at least, but like now I'm basically I'm forced to doomsday for the kill. Um This is like the Mitch A of of the leagues instead of the practice rooms. They really don't want to lose the combo, so they're playing fucking main deck surgical. <laughs> I won't be too ashamed if I lose to this deck because they're clearly out to get me. <laughs> or not, you know, not me in particular, but like combo decks. They're not interested in losing to combo. Grab my other underground C. I mean, I still have a ton of time. It's just there's a contract. I guess I cast the contract. Maybe I'm supposed to cast a doomsday first because if they just don't have anything, then. Let's just do that. You know, I kind of have to like try to make a move here to win the game. <sighs> they must have some counter magic. They're just trying to assess if this is a um a counterable spell. If this resolves, I'm probably just going to pass a turn and, and make a, a pile that has like Veil or something in it. Okay, so they decide to counter. No, nope, they decide not to counter. Okay, they decide to counter. Good. Force of Will pitching Supreme Verdict. Interesting. 
Well, I'm just going to, let's try and jam this infernal contract now. They let that resolve. I wonder if they don't have any more counter spells. They've done a lot of brainstorming and pondering, though. I'd be a little surprised if they didn't have any more counter spells. But, like, at the end of the day, I still have to kind of have to try to do something here. Okay. That's fine. So, basically, at this point, I'm hoping to draw some cantrips and maybe try to just cantrip, natural cantrip into tendrils. Um before I die to the Snapcaster Mage. That's not a fucking cantrip. Mitch Mitch A is a character from the practice room, the MTGO tournament practice room, who plays a deck that is, from what I can tell, a bunch of islands, um, four Snapcaster Mages as the only win cons. There might be a Jace the Mind Sculptor in there somewhere, and the rest is counter spells. And I'm talking like Spell Pierce, Main Deck, Mind Break Trap, Cryptic Command, Mana Leak, Negate, like every... Oh, he plays four bolts. Oh, wow. All right, he's really stepped his game up. But yeah, it's just like mono counter spell deck. Um, and yeah, like my four Main Deck Force... Like or really probably eight forces main deck mind break trap just like everything, and then if you win, like if you play a deck like goblins or something that has a decent matchup against control deck or like slivers with chalice uh, cavern of souls or something like that, so it can't counter your shit, then he just like lets the game time out a lot of times, or he'll like ask you how you can ever beat combo, you know. Um, like, how does that deck beat combo? Like, someone, was it, maybe it was you, Eldorte? Somebody, anyway, like, started the game with fucking turn one, like, Mountain Vile, and he just let the game time out. I don't know, he's, it's, he's a character. He's become a legend of sorts in the Doomsday Discord. Um... So I'm definitely in kind of a weird spot here. I have one more draw four in my deck. I obviously have a bunch of cantrips. I don't think I've played any cantrips at this point. But I'm out of echoes. I'm out of burning wishes. So Doomsday is a viable um, business spell. Cantripping into a tendrils is viable as a business spell. Um the other draw four would be okay here like i'm kind of just drawing like trash obviously there's not a ton of business spells left in my deck at this point but i'm not drawing very well at all that veil will be good if i can ever um you know find something to use it with but they might have their own veils too man if they have main deck surgical and veil they are really really uninterested in losing to combo. It was you, Eldorte? Okay, yeah. I played against Mitch A a couple times, and I just, like, there's just no reason to do it, because even if you do win, he just, like, lets things time out or salts out in chat. I don't know. He's a character. It's like, like, when you, if you think about, like, stuff that people do, or, like, the stuff people imagine that the tournament practice room is like, and when they say, like, oh, just play leagues, like, tournament practice room is, is trash. Like, that's... Mitch A is all of those things. He's the embodiment of what the tournament practice room... people What people expect the tournament practice room to be like. All right, folks, looks like I'm losing this game. But if I just naturally draw the tendrils, I might still be able to win. And so I'm kind of... um. I'm kind of tempted to to wait here to ferry. Okay. So now if I'm going to be trying to <laughs> Right, that's ridiculous. So now if I want to use this Veil of Summer to protect myself, it's gonna to have to be proactively. I won't be able to hold on to it because of the Teferi. But I really need to just actually draw a card that does something here. Doomsday is not going to be good enough. 
yeah, I mean, I can't do anything about that, so. I'm betting they take the Veil of Summer here. Yeah. <sighs> Let me think. I don't see a reason not to cast this Doomsday, right? Like, realistically. I'll go to three. Snapcaster Mage won't kill me. Um, I don't want to put... I won't be able to put Tendrils right on top of my deck because of Jace. But I could put a Cantrip on top of my deck. I just don't think there's a reason not to cast Doomsday. I, I, I'm trying to come up with one and I can't. So I'm just going to do it. So they let that resolve, which I guess doesn't surprise me all that much. Um, actually, the rest of this, it should be tendrils, ponders, and a bunch of cantrips, because... Um, I don't want them surgicaling me to sh just to shuffle, and then I, like, I want to maximize my chances that if they do that, I can still win the game. So, ponder, 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 tendrils, ponder. We'll go down to three, pass the turn. I cannot crack that fetch land. I'm kind of hoping that they jace me here and then put it on the bottom thinking that I need it. Oko, okay. Oko doesn't really do all that much right now. Oh, it kills me. That's what Oko does. Oko fucking kills me. Okay. Okay, yeah, I mean, that deck, it was really not, you know, they really didn't want to want to lose to plebs like me. Um... I think I'm cutting Echoes. Bring in the Empties and the Flusters. That seems fine, I think. I wonder if I should bring in the second Tendrils. You know? Like, just to have another potential... They did a ton of damage to themselves between their Thoughts uses and their Surgicals. So just have another potential... Um, natural draw. They're probably going to target my Burning Wishes. I don't know. This, I have no idea what I'm playing against, really. It's like... So, that's a good question. Um, I probably am overreacting to what last game was like. Um, my draws were particularly bad, but they did a ton of damage to themselves, and... Uh, I'm just thinking, like, I don't know, natural tendrils, as the game draws, goes on, natural, naturally drawing tendrils is going to be one of my better draws. Um, and so that's kind of why I did it. Like, Burning Wish can still find me an empty as a potential win con. Um, I don't think this hand is going to be good enough, so I'm going to mull it. Okay, I can work with this one. I'll keep. I'm going to put Cabal Rit on the bottom. That way I still have two Burning Wishes. And I'm just going to pa or play Valk and Pass. And then next turn, like I can end step Brainstorm and then try to um, go off and maybe just fucking go for it. 
and just hope they don't have force will. <laughs> this is a risk, kind of risky situation, but. So there's the thoughts he's. Interesting. So I think I need to show them a burning wish. Which sucks because if they have surgical, they're probably going to surgical it. Um, but I don't really want them taking... Oh, I show them two burning wishes. That's interesting. I don't really want them taking my LEDs. I don't know. This is tough, and I, it's, I'm in a weird spot now. Um, my, my thinking was that if I show them one burning wish, then they take the burning wish over the LEDs, but they ended up taking an LED, which is pretty annoying. And... Okay, I'm going to play out the LED now, because um, I don't want them getting surgical, so I want to at least have one available to me. And I'm just going to pass again. So there's a brainstorm. Obviously, I'm short on lands here, um, so mana might be a bottleneck for me. I'm going to hold off on this brainstorm as long as I can. What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck am I playing against? <laughs> Carpet of flowers, sure. They didn't even use it. This is a bad lands. Alright, I'm gonna just cast a burning wish, I think. I have a cabal therapy in my sideboard that I can go grab. Um which I'm gonna do. But yeah, I have really don't have much idea what I'm what I'm playing against. <laughs> yeah, legit. Like I, I, I really have no idea. Is that you know? Can they even do that? <laughs> if I can make some goblin tokens, how are they gonna win? <laughs> I know they had supreme verdict. I they we saw them um, fifth pitch at the force in game one, but like, I don't know, I'm just, it's just like, like it's frustrating to lose to a deck like this in some ways, because it just seems like such a fucking pile, but like, obviously they're playing a lot of good cards, I just, they're, I'm over here playing merely 4D chess, and they're playing like 19D chess, so... <laughs> Thought sees. I think I'm just going to Thought sees because if I can get a look at their hand, which, yeah, so they have Veil of Summer as well. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, if I could get a look at their hand, then I'd be able to um, 
therapy more accurately, but I just I have the foggiest fucking idea what's going on over there. They're still only getting one extra mana off this carpet, so it's basically just another land for them. Which is like like they're still behind the curve a little bit on lands. What are they gonna do? Snap thoughts use me? I guess I'm just gonna brainstorm in response here. There's a Veil of Summer, that's fun. I'm gonna put back both Burning Wishes, I think. Ugh, oh, excuse me. Fucking foreign. They probably are gonna take the Dark Grit here. They might take the Brainstorm, though. They take the Veil? Okay, that's fine too, I guess. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. They're so fucking low on life. Like, they do so much damage to themselves. Is this fucking Jace the Mind Sculptor? I wonder what they do. So they're just drawing three with it. Oh, I mean, that's another way they can get rid of goblin tokens, but it's less... I don't even know, dude. I don't even know. Just start with the therapy, see what happens. This is probably getting veiled. Adds my storm count, I guess, so that's good. See if this dark grit resolves. I hope it does. It did. They could very well have a uh, board wipe at this point, but like, it's a lot of goblins for their life total. All things considered. I still I could flash back Cabal Therapy. I wonder if I should. Block one, bounce one, bounce one. Next turn if they don't have any blockers. So that's gonna be like seven, but it's still lethal. Over two turns. It's still a two turn clock. Right? Six six. Yeah. Can even 
I mean, I still have the Burning Wish as well to make a few more goblins, potentially. Uh, do I flash back this therapy to try and snag something? I think I'm supposed to, but... Oh, no, wait. They veiled. I can't flash back the therapy yet, because I can't target them. I don't want to be stupid. Without Veil in the format, I absolutely would have done that, but... I probably should have fetched a basic island just to... I mean, a basic swamp just to deny them mana there. Oh, no, it was a Scalding Tarn, so I couldn't do that. Okay, so they're bouncing their Snapcaster. Why are they doing that? What is... Oh, because they're going to Supreme Verdict. That's why. So they wanted the Snapcaster to still be in their hand. So now they can Supreme Verdict Snap Thought Seize Me or something. Yeah, that's that's a load of shit. That's a hot load of trash. Oh my god. Wow. I don't even I don't even know what to think about this deck. I'm just gonna burning wish for ponder here, I think. Oh what does ponder even do for me? Because I can't draw with Leovold. I mean, I guess I can get the consigned to Oblivion, but, like, even that doesn't do a whole lot. I think I want to just ponder anyway, even though I'm not going to draw the card. Just try and set up some cards <laughs> that can do something. <laughs> I don't even know. This is like maybe I should have. Yeah, I got I got nothing. You know what? Let's just. I'm just gonna concede. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna bother trying to win that match because it's so unlikely. That was really something. Yeah, I mean, you know, I started out. I two owed two people in a row, so that was good. And then Charlie the Banana King was playing. Five color pile with main deck surgical extraction, um, main deck veil of summers, all your normal counter magic, discard, to fairy, um, Jace, just like it, you know, it, it's like was five color Mitch A basically. He didn't want to didn't want to lose to combo. Um, was what it felt like, and just absolutely stomped the life out of me. <laughs> I did get to make goblins in um, that game, so like I kind of went off, but the downside was that they immediately had um, the fuck was it called? Immediately had the um, Supreme Verdict. That's what it was. No, not Terminus. I didn't see Terminus, but I don't know. They just had, they had everything else. Alright, so what do I want out of this hand? Do I put back the Doomsday, or do I put back the Burning Wish, or do I put back a Thought Seize? I think this hand is still a little ways away from Doomsday for the win, unless it's an Echo Pile, a past turn Echo Pile. That I could conceivably do on the fifth, first turn, depending on what I see off of Thought Seize. I think I'm going to dump a Thought Seize. I think it's a little aggressive, but <laughs> yeah, maybe I'm regretting that. I think I probably should have cut the dooms, dropped the doomsday. Humans, and they have kite sail freebooters. Delightful. Ugh. <sighs> right, just thought they can do another discard spell. It could work. I mean, I think I'm going to try that plan because I don't think I really have another better plan. Um, I am considering as to whether or not I could potentially 
try to make like a past two turns pile, but with the vial, being able to vial in the freebooter at instant speed would make things difficult um, in that regard. I do have Cabal Therapy. I could Burning Wish now and Therapy for Therapy the Freebooter. Um, Humans is a tough matchup. I don't even know what I want to take, what I want to get. I mean, I almost want to just pass. Actually, basically, you know, they're gonna make the freebooter and have to pick something to take. Yeah, I guess that's a possibility. I would spending like taking the vial and then. I'd have to spend ritual like burning ritual into burning wish and plus therapy to take the freebooters and that's a ton of resources and that's a Thalia. So I think I lose this game now. Um cuz like even if I burning wish they just get what I they freeboot for what I they take what I freebooted for with the burning wish. Um So, I almost feel like I just have to wait again, but I think it's pretty unlikely that I win from here. I almost wonder if I'm supposed to scoop. Like, the problem is the Thalia. I, it's going to be really difficult to play through with Thalia. Um, they presumably are going to take the Burning Wish. And I just, I think it's really unlikely that I can doomsday through Thalia at this rate, so I'm almost thinking it's better to just concede and try to hide what I'm on. Not taking the Vile as a control player seems like maybe the wrong choice, but... I think I'm just going to concede. I think it's, it's very unlikely that I win from this position, so... That's not it's not a super fun um, thing to do, but I think it is the thing to do. So I'm gonna cut the veils. Uh, what else should I cut? Don't think I want to cut a doomsday, but I can cut a ponder because I'm just not gonna have a ton of time to cantrip. Actually, I think I'd rather have the ponders because winning fast with doomsday is going to be one of my better ways to do that. I'll take the burning, I mean the rain of filth out. Um, yeah, I'm good with this I think. The problem is like conceding there also maybe doesn't hide all that much information <laughs> because like the tactical concede is very much a combo deck thing to do in my opinion. So I don't know, but I still just think my chances of winning there were very low and that there wasn't a whole lot of cause for me to continue playing that game. So really, I'm looking for a fast kill here, and I just, I'm just not convinced that that's good enough.
it has a lot of I mean it has like the interaction that I want but it lacks the speed I almost think I would rather just have speed mm, I'm gonna keep this um, I'm just gonna put the tendrils on the bottom and I'm just gonna hope to draw something good like a draw four or like cantrip plus doomsday Don't really care about the cavern. There's the vial, okay. There's a ponder. I'm just gonna pass though, because if I top deck a doomsday, um, I'll be able to win the game. Wizard. What's a wizard? I'm putting in a one mana card. Champion, of course, makes sense. And then Thalia? Okay. So I think my best bet here might be to just bounce the Thalia now and hope I rip. Hmm, maybe that doesn't make sense. But if I let the vial tick up to two, they'll just be able to put the Thalia back in. And it's very unlikely they're going to vial past two, since so much of their deck costs two. So I think the play here is just chain and hope I get super lucky. I'm not sure I've ever won this matchup for what it's worth. Like, it's just really, really difficult to win this matchup. There's the fucking Doomsday. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna take the Thoughtseize and Thoughtseize their Thalia and hope that they don't have anything else that's a strong disruptive 2-drop like a Sanctum Prelate that they can cast or a Meddling Mage. Um, okay. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's why they said Wizard, right? That guy must be a Wizard. Is the Sanctum Prelate a Wizard? No, it's a Cleric. So they can't actually cast the Prelate unless they have another white source, but the Meddling Mage is a wizard. So they can just hold up Meddling Mage here and Wasteland me. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know what they would pick with the Sanctum Prelate. I don't think five would be the answer though. Five on Force of Will, I guess. So now they're gonna take that. I do have a Swamp under my Doomsday so that I can just, I can just pass and hope they don't draw another Dark Rit. But I suspect this is gonna be the Meddling Mage. We'll see what they name. Because of the Chain of Vapor, it's probably gonna be like Tendrils of Agony. Yep, they named Tendrils, so that's a pretty good name. Um, so I'm a few cards off now. What did they draw? Oh, Athalia's Lieutenant. I'm going to die so fucking fast here. Yeah, I'm having a hard time seeing how I might win this. Um, I'm at 12. I'm gonna take nine next turn. Put me a three, and then I won't even be able to doomsday plus. Doomsday plus something else. So yeah, I think I'm just dead actually. I think I'm legit just dead. Assuming if Sanctum Prelate comes down next turn, which actually, yeah, I know it can't because of the vial. Yeah, okay. I'm just going to concede. I can't win. All right, let's see if I can get the 3 2. That was, um, this has been a weird league. 
Yeah, I mean, for what it's worth, I don't think Jace would have helped there. Um, because I just didn't actually have the goods to to go off. Um, you know, I, I was still missing pieces to, to actually kill with Doomsday. So, I needed to draw the Doomsday the turn I bounced to Thalia to be able to win that game. I suppose you could argue that, like, what could have happened? I could have drawn the swamp, pondered into a draw four, done all my rituals. I guess maybe I was a little preemptive there. But no, I still couldn't have doomsday, so it had to do my draw fours. Draw four into, like, an echo plus some LEDs, probably. And then do a twister and hope it was a good enough twister. Matchmaking <laughs> failed. That's fun. Right, on Orthodox Bird. That's kind of what I was saying, because, like, they had nine power on board at that point, which means that even without any more creatures on the field, and I know that they can put the Sanctum Prelate down, because um, they can tick file up to three, so any more creatures on board, and they do nine damage, which turns off Doomsday plus draw four. So, mm, Matt Soleil. Delightful. So, I don't know what this person's playing lately, but historically it's been a lot of four color loam. I'm assuming more of the same. Um, I'm not sure this hand is where I want to be against that. Um, this is a very risky hand because of how badly it folds to Wasteland. I think I want to keep it. I'm leaning towards keeping it. Which I have just done. <laughs> I'm gonna just try and dodge the Wasteland, I guess. I wonder if they're playing Veil. I have no idea what my opponent's playing. This kind of smells like holding up a veil, but it also could be just not having a turn one play, which is what seems to be the case. Okay, what the fuck is this? <laughs> um, what the ungodly fuck is this? I guess, what do I take? The Wayfinder? Abrupt Decay isn't really a thing I'm concerned about. So I'm going to take the Wayfinder, I think. Well, no Wasteland, at least, unless they draw one, but the fact that there's a Loam there makes me think that, um, like, it's very possible that they draw a Wasteland and waste be able to waste me out of the game. But no Wasteland this turn. Oh, are you fucking kidding me? That's so frustrating. <laughs> I can't fucking believe that. I can kill it. Like, <laughs> you know, I'm not cold to it. It's just annoying as fuck. I need to find red mana before they find wasteland. Put back that. Um, I guess this veil isn't doing a whole lot for me. <sighs> it's extremely frustrating. I really need a fetch land here. Or that. That can work.
Yeah, I legit have no idea what my opponent is on. Alright, so I don't want Veil, I don't want Echo. They have Caracas to protect the Teague. Um, I think I need to get my Bounce spell instead of um, Grape Shot so that they can't Wasteland me off of um, the color of mana I need to kill it. On the other hand, though, I do have the Lotus Petal that could make the color I need. So yeah, I can at least probably bounce plus discard the Teague, or I could try to just go off. One option would be to bounce, like I'm going to draw the Echo, so an option would be to bounce the Teague and um, so this is Marin probably, yeah. An option would be to bounce the Teague and then discard my Echo and try to go off, but I think that's a little premature, maybe. I'm at seven now. <laughs> I'm just going to pass. I don't think there's a super good reason not to. So I'm betting they play the Wayfinder off of Forest and Township. So they're going to hit me. I'm going to need to make a move here for sure, though. Obviously. So this is the Wayfinder, yep. And we'll see what they mill. Four cards entered the reveal zone. So they put Courser, Ghost Quarter. I don't really care about Ghost Quarter. It's fine, I just get to go get my Swamp. That's fine. So, in the end step, trigger on the stack, bounce the Teague, and I'm just gonna have to try and fucking go ham on their clam. I'm just gonna consign this guy right now, so I don't forget. Or miss my priority. Untap. We'll see what we get for my draw. Another Cabal Rit. Okay. So I have a lot of mana here, obviously. Um, I don't think there's any reason to spend any of it on my th a Thought Seize. So I'm just going to go Hog Wild here. Um, I do think, I have, since I have so much, I'm going to cast a Contract before I echo. Um, I can Thought Seize myself to get the echo in the graveyard. Interesting. Um, I think I want to ponder here. I just have a lot of mana, and so like if I can find an LED, I'll be very happy. There's no LED, but there is another Cabal Rit. Do I have a land drop? I do have a land drop. But I can use land drop after I echo. I wonder if it makes sense to Cabal Rit here. It probably does. Still no, um, still no LED, but on Cabal Rit. Just make as much black mana as I can. And then I'll play out the Lotus Petals. So these will be able to make red for me. Um, I might just leave. I'll probably crack one, and I might leave another in play. Let's crack one for red right now. And then I'm going to Thought Seize myself. I'm going to go down to two here, which is not a lot. but Echo. No blue left. 
So it's a good echo. Good enough. <laughs> I could go for the grape shot here. I'm not gonna though. I'm just gonna grab my tendrils and then I'm gonna put, I'm gonna hide some crap I think. And then I'm just gonna brainstorm into the tendrils. Hopefully there's no Spirit Guide plus Veil of Summer. That would be an unmitigated disaster. <clears throat> Can I just click yield through this turn? And it'll zip on down. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Okay. Let's see. So I want the chains for sure, and the echoing truth, and that, and we'll cut the veils, because I don't think they're going to do all that much. Come on, get out of here. And then I need to cut one more card. Might be the Reign of Filth, since they're a loam deck. I think I'm fine with that. <laughs> okay. All right. Generally, these decks, this kind of deck, my opponent's kind of deck, is the sort of deck that I feel pretty comfortable playing against with this. Um, obviously, them drawing that Teague was pretty brutal, but didn't stop me. Um, I won't be surprised if there's Leyline of the Voids for my opponent. I think this hand is playable, um, because it's got... Bounce, it's got discard, I can get both my basics. Um, it has a business spell. I'm not sure what the best play here is in terms of like, should I thoughts use them or should I save? I guess I should thoughts use them because on turn three, I'll be able to hard cast the echo with my current hand. So, as long as they don't have the Ghost Quarter, I'd be happy. So there's the Teague. Um, although, since I have the answer to the Teague, I almost don't want to take it. Like, I'd almost rather take the Seder Wayfinder. Although I have an answer, if they did find, I have the answer to, um, what the fuck's it called, Merit Lage, if they found that as well, so... They already have tutors for the land, so it, taking away another tutor doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I mean, I think the bigger thing, now that I think about it, is like they already have a way to find a land, so giving them another way to find land is just not, like, not a big deal, really, you know? They probably only have one Dark Depths in their, their deck, they found Wasteland. Wasteland and Vernon Catacombs are really the only cards that they can take. So they kept the... Wait, what did they keep? I'm sorry. I. They didn't put any cards into their hand. Oh, because they wanted to pump up the Elvish Reclaimer. Interesting. Okay. I can live with that. They just didn't value any of those cards enough. So what's their hand right now that I know about? A mystery card, Cabal Pit, and Swamp. There is a, a non, what's the word? A non zero clock. So I'll grab the snow covered island and ponder here. Brainstorm and a Dark Grit. 
think I want both of those cards. <clears throat> I'm just going to hold on as long as possible before I try to combo off because I might be needing to hard cast an echo in this game. And so just oh the wasteland. Okay, well the wasteland is not such a big deal just because of the makeup of my my hands and my mana base. And okay. I'm just going to play the land here and pass. I could even bounce the Elvish Reclaimer, although I suspect that they're not even going to attack with it because they would rather just hold up. Well, I could be wrong about that. There's the Cabal Pit. So the Cabal Pit and the Swamp are both down, so they have one mystery card. I think I'm just supposed to take the hit here. Yeah, so they're holding up the Reclaimer. Which makes sense. Um, what do I do? I don't really think there's a good reason to do anything except like brainstorm here, right? I'll brainstorm. Here we go. Let's do this. Let's see what happens. So they're wasting that now. That seems whack. Oh, because they think there's a card that I want to draw. I mean, I guess I would have been okay to reasonably happy to draw the Badlands, but like, I'm I'm pretty pretty fine with this as well. I might even draw a better card now, like a Chain of Vapor. I think I'm supposed to just eat here. I have a land drop. What's their last card? Surgical or something? Oh no, they're just firing that off. That's fine. Yeah, so this is like, this is it. Oh, they have a bog? Oh, okay. That's fine, I guess. You know, losing out on the Dark Ritz is a little annoying, but it's not actually even that big a deal because I have a lot of mana still. I'm just going to fire this off. If any, if nothing else, it makes the Elvish Reclaimer smaller, and they still don't have, um, they don't have Merit Lage, so... 9, 10. That's just lethal, right? Unless they have Veil of Summer. But why would they have Veil of Summer? I can Infernal Contract here. And still have enough mana to Burning Wish. I'm gonna do it. I don't think it's gonna make a difference. Fascinating. But I don't think it matters. I may, if I brainstorm here and find a thought seize, I can tease out a veil if they have it. There's a Tendrils. I don't think that's going to matter much. I'm just trying to think if there's anything I can do here to try and play around the Veil that they might have. I just, it doesn't really look like it. 11, 12. Yeah. Yeah. 
just straight tendrils. Let me keep your hand full. I guess it's not lethal unless they can put three lands into the graveyard. So I can then try to echo next turn. See, what I was kind of hoping for was, like, I don't know. But that probably is the right play, right? Oh, there's an echo in my graveyard because I hard cast it. Huh. All right, I'm just going to do that. If they have the Veil, then they Veil. Got it. All right. Not bad. So we got the 3-1. I mean, 3-2. Um, that's pretty good. The... Um, every match took only two games, which is always interesting. The only blue deck we played against was Charlie the Banana King. It's like, so these two matchups here, humans is very difficult between Thalia, Meddling Mage, um, uh, what the fuck's it called? Kite Sail Freebooter, and the fact that I think they can kill on turn three, so they have a very aggressive, a very aggressive deck. It's, they have a very good combo matchup. It's a hard matchup. Um, so like, you know, it's disappointing. My hands weren't super great in that matchup either, but it's like, it's not, I don't know. That's a, a matchup you lose to a lot, so... And then Charlie with the Banana King, I don't know what the fuck was going on with that, but any deck with main deck Surgical Extractions, um, I'm betting there were main deck Veil of Summers too. I just, Charlie with the Banana King was ready for me, um, which is fine. You know, shit happens. But overall, I mean, the 3-2 isn't too bad for what realistically is a, a fairly, um, Still a fairly experimental deck, so let's. I'm just going to take a look at the deck one more some more. Man, maybe I'll even play a practice room match. I'm not going to jump into another league right now because I'm not going to be able to finish it probably. Um, I'm really tempted to open this treasure chest, but I'm trying real hard not to. Um, all right, see you later, bird, or talk to you later. I probably won't see you. Uh, anytime soon, but, but, uh, yeah, um, thanks for watching, thanks for hanging out, all right, let's, let's just run one practice room match, just for funsies, <clears throat> anyone know what the price of boosters, the treasure chests are now, um, I don't know where, what it's hanging out at, at this point, Anyone in chat have any experience with MATLAB? It's kind of an odd question, but um, <laughs> I've never touched it before, and I'm going to have to use it in a computer vision class next semester. I'm a little intimidated because it's like, like it's not like it's a intro to MATLAB class. It's like complicated programming shit in, in a language or whatever that I've never done before. Um, <clears throat> I think this hand is garbage. I'll keep this. You used it 13 years ago, yeah. Do you remember my? Is it? I, <clears throat> I've seen it, seen the code a little bit. I remember it being pretty C-like. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know. I don't ex anticipate having too much difficulty picking it up. Um, but I just never used it before. Um, I know that all my mechanical engineering friends didn't really like it or just struggled with it, but that might be more of a mechanical engineering thing than a uh, MATLAB thing. Huh. I'm not sure what to do with this hand. I think I'm going to put back the contract. Oh, wait. i got to click keep first. Put back the contract. I'll just play this, and I'll fetch the Underground Sea, and I'll ponder.
So those are good cards. This smells like it's got to be either Storm or a Sneak and Show. So I'm glad I have the Thoughtseize. What did they do? One top, one bottom. So I'll be able to see whatever card they got, which is good for me. Okay, so it's Storm. Um, I think I'm supposed to take the Cabal Rit, maybe? Cabal Rit or Brainstorm? I think it's between one of these two. <clears throat> I think it's going to be the Cabal Rit. They're a little stuck on mana here. Um... So my next card down is a Burning Wish. If they don't have any... Um, discard spells for me... Um, exactly how nutty would that Brainstorm have had to have been for them to kill me right now? Holy shit. What an absolutely insane brainstorm that must have been. So they get ad nauseum. They're not really drawing anything good right now. There's a DP. A ton of discard, but otherwise... Oh, okay, now they're hitting something. Now they're hitting their stuff. They're really going hard. Is that good enough? That's probably, that's good enough, right? So I'll just concede. Okay, well, so that's what I get for not taking the Brainstorm, I guess. Jesus Christ. Um, so in this matchup, I like to cut a Doomsday because they tend to turn into discarded heavy slugfests that... Um, make Doomsday not so great because this deck's pass a turn piles aren't super hot. You still have Burning Wishes to be able to fetch the Doomsdays. Um, and I like to cut a Reign of Filth because like, if you're trying to go off fast, you often don't have the time to make a bunch of land drops to make Reign of Filth good. So... Okay, I can keep this. Um... I'm just going to play the Polluted Delta and pass. I, they didn't see any green last game, and so I kind of want to hide the fact that I could be playing Veil of Summer. Obviously, there's no guarantee that I'm even going to find a Veil of Summer, but if it the opportunity arises, I would like it. That is an option. They don't need to know about it just yet. <coughs> Fluster Storm should prevent the turn one kill, unless they have a really, really bonkers hand, which it seems like they don't. Excuse me. another land. I'm just, now I'm showing them the green because I'd rather, I value, you know, being able to fetch there more than I value, like, holding up, or I mean, hiding the information about me potentially having green. And now I have two fluster storms as well, so. They're still digging.
think I'm going to shuffle away those cards. I don't really... Like, having the... What the fuck was it? Cabal Rit is okay, but I think I want to shuffle that crap away. So I'm going to go grab my... Bulk here. I probably should have waited till my upkeep to do that. Um, strictly speaking. Because... If they'd had Dark Rit, Dark Rit, Ad Nauz, they could have gotten me while I was shields down. But, uh... Let's see, I don't think... I could... Burning Wish for Infernal Contract now, just to draw more cards. And that might actually be a better use of my Burning Wish, except that I think I'd rather hold up both Flusterstorms. So... That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> so there's a thought sees. Interesting. I mean, I could, so I could Dark Rit Fluster here and counter this Thoughtseize. But it probably just makes more sense to just let them take one of my Fluster Storms. It's possible they take the Burning Wish, um, although I tend to doubt it. Excuse me. It's possible they take the Dark Rit. Yeah, I don't know. So they took a Fluster. That makes sense. I need to get rid of those probably to be able to go off. Suspect they're not going to go for it this turn unless they have. If they have a really nutty hand, they could win in here, but they would need like Lotus Petal plus Rituals, Tutor, and Veil. So it would be a lot, a lot required to go off here. I'm going to close out of this window. I don't need that up. Oh my god, they're going to have it. Okay, maybe not. Next turn they're gonna they're gonna have it. Um Oops. I fucked up. God damn it. I meant to leave a black floating so that I could get the fucking Cabal Therapy, but I didn't. And I porked it. Heh. I'm still going to grab the Cabal Therapy, because um, next turn I could potentially use it to put Echo into my graveyard. But I really screwed up. I guess five rounds is all I have. Five rounds of decent play is all I have in me. Uh, <laughs> I think if this is a dark ritual, I'm just gonna fucking fluster storm. I don't know what they're doing, what they're thinking here.
It appears my opponent has lost connection to the game or something. Or ran off to poop, maybe. It's possible. I've been considering that myself. Alright, well, I don't really want to sit here. Like, this game is kind of interesting, but I don't really want to sit here and wait if they're not going to do anything. Like, I would rather jump into another game and... Oh, there's a dark rip. I don't think I can afford to fluster this because there's just too many configurations of their hand that get through that. Have they got hard cast echo? Now this I could much more easily fluster, but this definitely smells like the um this definitely smells like there's a Veil of Summer involved. I'm not sure I can afford to not fluster it though. Okay. That's one way to do it. Yes, I mean, they just fucking had the stone cold nuts. I mean, I don't know what the rest of their hand is like. Yeah, they just had a shitload of fucking mana. They just tutor tutor tendrils. Yeah. All right. Sometimes they just have it. Let's uh, let's play that one one more. That was. Um, <clears throat> I do think I think Ant is a, a pretty good matchup for me in general. Um, you have main deck veils and you have a lot of ways to fight against discard with your your twisters and your I mean echoes and your even the draw force are pretty good at fighting through discard. But when they just have it, they just have it. This hand looks pretty clunky to me. I'm going to mull it. Okay. I can work with this. Um, I think I'm going to put back the Burning Wish. I'm going to start with the Ponder. If I can find an LED, I could win on turn two. depending on what my opponent does. Blood St. Meyer. This smells like Black Red Reanimator. So if they don't just dump on me, Unmask me, sure. Pitching Cabal Therapy, yeah. So they probably take the Doomsday. I don't think they're gonna... They could take the Rit, maybe, but... Or even the Thoughtseize, potentially. I do have the LED on top, so I'll be able to Echo next turn. But, um... They took the Doomsday, that's fine. <laughs> they're a fan, apparently. <laughs> so that's cool. So, hopefully I'm not just dying here. Um... <coughs> We'll see what they put in the graveyard. So there's still no no creature in the graveyard. Um, I'm kind of inclined to just thoughts use here. If they have like an oops all creatures hand, it could be an issue. They don't. So I'll take the entomb. I'll play out the LED and pass, and then next turn. 
Oh, I can echo, and I'll be able to echo with Cabal right up. They find another looting. So it, mm, it's, it's possible that I, I get fucked here, um, but it doesn't look like it happened, so that's good. So I'll crack that, probably just grab the Underground Sea again. Snow-covered island is fine. I'm, I'll likely have another um, land drop, though, so I'm not going to cast it here. Or I'm not going to play it here, because I'll probably hit another land. So I'll leave one blue and two black floating after the wheel. And hopefully I either draw into some interaction or something. Let's see. So I have a land drop. I don't think... Well, let me think. This might be good enough. No, I don't think it's quite good enough. So, I can make three black mana. I was, I, I'm like one mana short of a doomsday kill here, I think. Um. I mean, I could go grab another Echo. Another Echo is an option. I think I'm gonna brainstorm though. Interesting. This might be enough for lethal. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I'll grab, like, Valk or something here. Brainstorm. That Lotus Petal can still make red mana for me. Thoughtseize. Six. Yeah. So this is like just enough. Seven, make red. Eight, whole priority, crack for black for exactly 10 storm. Boom, all right. So now we bring in the flusters at least. So I'm, I'm still trying to figure out how to how to play this matchup. Um, Fluster comes in, Reign of Filth definitely comes out. I need to cut one more card. But the real question is, like, do I bring in either Cabal Therapy or the Chain of Vapors? I know, I think Bryant Cook playing the Epic Storm brings in Chain of Vapors against Reanimator. Um, it can bounce Iona or Chancellor or, like, an Animate Dead or something um, in a pinch. So... I'm just not convinced that it's it's worth the slot. <clears throat> it's worth diluting the deck. I think I'm going to cut Ponder and Reign of Filth. And the reason being that I'm just not going to have... You know, I don't have a ton of time to mess around cantripping. Um, so I'd rather just take my chances on a powerful opening hand. This hand is playable, so I'll keep it. Um, obviously, the Tendrils is kind of not doing a whole lot for me, but I wouldn't pass up a 6. That was that 6. So, uh, it looks like I'm just dying, though. Grizzled Dare. Okay. Well, that, you know, that happens. That definitely can happen. Um, not a lot you can do about that. I guess I'm just going to concede. <laughs> and we'll go to game three. This matchup is hard because they're so goddamn fast. Um, 
you know, you can win if you have a hand that interacts on turn one. Um, so I'm going to take this. I'll put the tendrils on the bottom, and I'm going to play Polluted Delta. Like, this is a pretty, this is the kind of hand you want against this deck. Um, so I can play the Delta. I'm going to play out that LED and pass, and then next turn, the goal will be I play Badlands, and then I hit that Yeet with the Echo. Probably, I may not even play Badlands, simply because um, I probably will hit a land drop off of my Echo Draw. Let's see what you got for me. I'm just going to... I think I'm just supposed to thought or fluster this. I could be wrong. I don't think I'm wrong, though. Their hand would have to be truly insane for this to be incorrect. So, here we go. <laughs> like, they would need to have, like, Lotus Petal, Dark Rit, um, and Tomb, Rian. Like, it's possible, but, it, you know... If their hand was that good, then was I going to win the game in the first place? Probably not. Okay, so this is great. I am going to play the Badlands here. Make my land drop simply because I have the Dark Rit available. And I'm actually, since I think my best bet to win this game is to win this turn, I'm going to spend the Underground Seed to make my black for the ritual so that the Badlands can make me red. I'll crack for blue. And I'll Echo. And I'll leave one blue and two black floating. So Echo is great against these kinds of decks because it lets you... All right, so they did. Um, it lets you try to win quickly, um, which is invaluable in matchups like this where you often have no more than a one-turn window. Um, so I'll cast Doomsday, and I'll get Dark Rit. I'll draw Dark Rit and Infernal Contract... I'll put back Tendrils and the Lotus Petal, and the remaining three cards will probably just be more Rituals. I'll throw another Lotus Petal in there. That should do the trick. So I just need to make sure that I draw... those cards. Brainstorm, put back Tendrils and a Petal. Dark Rit, Contract, Petal, Petal, Badlands, whatever, give them the blades. Great. Cool. All right. So, fun little practice match, I guess. Um, Nice to be able to be Black Red Reanimator once in a while. So yeah, thanks for watching. Um, I mean, that's the deck. I'll put it up on screen one more time. Um, it's uh, it's really wild. It's a shitload of fun to play. I think it's pretty powerful. Um, it's... I don't know. It's got a lot of merit. It, there's still a few kind of kinks that I need to work out, like... Veil is really good in some matchups and kind of shit in others. My very first version of it, I was playing some Cabal Therapies in that slot, and like those would be good in like the Humans matchup, um, for example. Having the main deck, there's no green in this, and like I don't know, I you know, there's other ways to fight blue decks besides the Veil of Summers, but Veil of Summers are really good as well. So I'm gonna keep playing this version for a while. Um, hopefully be getting my echoes in paper soon so I can go trash my local meta with it. But yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. So thanks for thanks for hanging out. Um, and because I was able to go 3-2, I have enough to be able to stream another league at some point. So that's, that's super fun. Um, all right, uh, that's it.